tax. Let's talk a little bit more about the voter turnout in Georgia. Record proportions, according to the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, more than 796,000 people have already cast their ballots over the last three weeks. That's two and a half times higher than the presidential primary two years ago, but some on the left are still screaming about voter suppression. It's like the lie and racism, which is a lie, which is that these black people, don't, they don't deserve the access to, to citizenship in the way that other Americans do, that they haven't worked for it, that they don't, that they don't understand sort of the, the weight of American democracy. And as a result, we need to make decisions for them. I think those two things are so intertwined in this country. Let's talk about this now with Georgia Congressman Buddy Carter. Congressman, great to have you with us. Thank you for having me. So you just heard it, Georgia's new voting law seems to be passing the test here with record voter turnout, two and a half times higher than the presidential primary two years ago. So you hear, though, the left is still trying to drive home those talking points, voter suppression theory, racism. What's your response, Congressman? There is no voter suppression. Look, the Voter Integrity Act, the Election Integrity Act that was passed by the Georgia State Legislature was a great piece of legislation that made it easier to vote and harder to cheat. It's exactly what we needed, and I applaud the legislature for taking this step. No, it is not voter suppression. This is another example. Remember four years ago, Stacey Abrams was saying that, oh, she was cheated out of the election. So everybody wants to say that Donald Trump was the first one to say that there was voter irregularities. I beg to differ. Stacey Abrams was saying that four years ago when she lost the race for governor of the state of Georgia. So this is, this is somewhat disingenuous of them to try to bring this up with voter suppression. There is no voter suppression. You've seen record turnouts. The numbers speak for themselves. Let's also talk about this GOP governor primary battle between Brian Kemp and David Perdue. We've mentioned, you know, it's kind of a proxy fight between President Trump and Vice President Mike Pence. I think that's on the back burner, but that's hanging out there. Trump, of course, is back Perdue, and Pence was in Georgia last night at a Brian Kemp rally. Now, neither Kemp nor Pence mentioned Perdue's name at all. They focused their criticism on Stacey Abrams. Is that something that you wish President Trump would do instead of uh, kind of picking between these two guys? Well, obviously, you don't like to see this kind of strife, but I will tell you, the way that I view this race here is that we are very fortunate to have two fine candidates running for governor. I mean, Brian Kemp's done a great job as governor and deserves a second term. David Perdue would be a wonderful governor. He's been a CEO of Fortune 500 companies. I can remember a time when we had trouble recruiting Republican candidates in the state of Georgia to run statewide, and here we're complaining about having two good candidates are. No, we've got two fine candidates right here, two good choices. And I want to make sure everyone understands, once this is said and done, whoever is our candidate, we're going to be behind them. We're going to, you're going to see a unified Republican Party in the state of Georgia. We're all going to be behind the Republican candidate because we know that elections have consequences because policies have consequences. And the policies of the Republican platform are better than those of the Democratic platform. And just one follow up on that real quickly. I mean, if Brian Kemp does come out on top, which all the polls indicate he will, uh, do you expect President Trump to get behind him and actually vocally support him against Stacey Abrams? I don't know the answer to that question. David Perdue has said publicly that he will endorse Brian Kemp if Brian wins the primary, and, and I, think, I, I think he will do that, and I'm glad to hear him say that. Now, what President Trump does uh, remains to be seen. My hope, of course, is that we will coalesce behind the Republican candidate. It was, Listen, Stacey Abrams would be horrible awful as governor of the state of Georgia. She would turn back what the, the progress that we've made under Republican leadership with the last governors. And she turned that, all of that back. That's the last thing we need in the state of Georgia right now. All right, Congressman Buddy Carter, we know you're also working on the uh, baby formula shortage issue in Congress. You're a pharmacist by trade. We'll love to talk to you again about that issue sometime in the near future. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you.